everybody. It's wonderful to have you here again. And um, it's our textile group, and we meet once a month in the winter on the first Friday of the month. And sometimes it's to share our work, and sometimes it's to welcome a guest. And today it's my great pleasure to welcome Judy Martin, who is a textile artist from Canada, from Manitou Island, which is Northern Ontario. And um, Judy is a prolific maker and um, what I read from her, um, I follow her Instagram and her blog and all that is that uh, she, the work needs to be seen, it needs to go out, it needs to <coughs> be there. Um, and uh, uh, I thought it was a very powerful image. So I won't say more about Judy, I'm going to let her introduce herself and uh, share her passion and her work with us. Thank you so much, Judy, for being here today. Well, thank you for having me. I'm very, very glad to be here. And um, yeah, I'm going to share my screen now and we'll uh, I'll start, okay? Is that yes, all right? of course, of course. Mm -hmm. It's going here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we can see your screen. Yeah. Okay, and I'm going to make it. That's it. Perfect. Yeah. Okay, so this is a picture of me. And I'm standing with my uh, Northern Ontario installation that is now currently showing at World of Threads in Oakville. Thank you very much for having me and letting me speak about work. And I don't get that many opportunities to talk about my work. And every time I do, I rewrite everything I was going to say, you know. Um, so it's good for me as an artist to reflect. So every now and then it's nice to, to do this kind of thing. So this is from October. I went to the opening and it's a really good festival, I think. It'll be open until the middle of January. And I like the way they've installed my my work. I did see an image recently, though they put barriers all around it, which is unfortunate, so that you can't go inside it, because that's part of my idea. But anyway, I'm going to speak today mostly about my quilt making practice. I make art from a, a place of solitude. I make art from an island. I live on Manitoulin Island, and this is my daily view. Manitoulin Island is in Lake Huron, in the Great Lakes of Canada, the middle of Canada. I make art from my long life. I make art from the inner world. The installation here is one that you can enter into, or you're supposed to be able to, or you can go around it in a circular way. To move through it and around it is to perform a physical wrapping or circular motion with your body. Please consider the spirit inside us to be like a circle, dynamic and never ending. And yet it is inside the mortal limit of our body. So a circle is very important to my work. And I talk about wrapping and encircling a lot. This stitch that I'm using here is the wrapping stitch. I make art about time and touch. The blankets that make up this installation are 100 years old, with decades of human touch and passage of the seasons already in them. Some of them needed to be mended. They were family blankets camp blankets that my husband's family used. And then I go and add another year of stitch to them. So all that time and all that touching is embedded in the blankets and I think makes them very powerful um, textiles. I make art as a mother. I make art with my body. I make art about care. The wrapping of these bundles is a healing gesture that takes my whole arm, not just the fingers. My work is about the body. I live in a rural area. I make art about time passing. 
This photo is from last week. Not only time passing, but time endured and time is made visible in my work. The leaves will return in the spring. It is a circle. I make art from this view. The horizon line is not a real thing, you know. It is a construct that our eye can settle on. But here, in this picture, it is the Wikwemakon Peninsula across that Manitowanning Bay in front of my, my house. And looking out at the Wigwemacon Peninsula, at that horizon, at the sky above it and the water that moves all the time, informs my work. Ever-changing, always beautiful. I make art from magic. I took this photo last night. The colored light tree and the full moon gave enough light for my phone to focus on the deer that move through our yard. Manitoulin is a magical and spiritual place to live and be an artist, and I've lived here for 30 years. I'm going to tell you a bit of my life story. I was born and grew up in an isolated area in the middle of Canada. I grew up in northwestern Ontario, further away even now, even from Toronto than I am now. I was the middle child. I had an older brother, a younger sister. My father was an inventor slash entrepreneur and had a variety of ways to create an income. He was self-employed through all my childhood. He died in 2017 and I'm showing you this quilt because it makes me think of my isolated childhood, about the emptiness and the loss of losing him when he was in his mid nineties and that blue triangle was his hospital gown. So it's included in here as a physical. He built the house we lived in. And this is dyed with rust. Well, these fabrics were dyed with rust that are in this piece. This one is about my mother. It's called When You Walk on a Tight Rope. Um, my mother was a sensitive, passionate, intellectual, she taught herself French and psychology, uh, and she made sure that her children had plenty of art supplies and piano lessons. She was extremely shy and did not entertain, and she did not allow us to entertain or go anywhere. So I grew up with a lot of solitude. I spent my summers outside reading or drawing, and my winters on a school bus dreaming. I can tell you a little bit more about this piece uh, that elm tree is something that my mom looked at from her window. That was that was the main thing right in front of her. She just loved that elm tree. And the text is by a surrealist poet, a K Sage. And if if you start in the uh, upper uh, upper left, you can go around letter by letter and read K Sage's poem. When you walk on a tightrope at the least unexpected thing, you break your neck. Leave me alone, I can manage all by myself. So that was my mother. <laughs> and this is where, the kind of landscape I grew up in, which is large sky, flat, uh, fertile uh, valley. It was the Rainy River Valley where I grew up. And that was almost in Manitoba. It was two hours from Winnipeg and on, on the international border near International Falls. And so it was in this little corner of Northwestern Ontario and quite open and rural. And I, I live on a rural place now. Manitoulin is also very pastoral like this. And, and in 1990, I made a, a quilt about living where I do. I, I, by then I had lived four different areas of Northwestern Ontario, but still Northwestern Ontario, Fort Francis, Rainy River, Thunder Bay, and Kenora. And so I wrote the names of those towns in that snowy area that made, made me think I was so isolated. You can see it here in the detail. I often will show my hands in the photos in order to give you an idea of the scale of the piece. This is a new piece. I finished it in 2021. It's called Medicine Earth. 
I think by having my hands in the photos, though, it also is a little trick to make you feel that you can maybe touch it through the photo. So it's a, a psychological game that I think helps with my work being understood over the internet. This is the full piece, it's Medicine Earth. I'll continue with the life story now. I met my husband when I was 19 and we were both attending Lakehead University in Thunder Bay. He was from Toronto, but he came up there to study forestry. And I had I got a one year teaching diploma. And when, with that diploma, I headed to the tiny town of Rainy River to teach school at the age of 20. And uh, Ned drove his little Volkswagen up from Thunder Bay the six hour drive up to Rainy River on Fridays and picked me up after school and took me back to the city for the weekend. And then I came back to Rainy River to continue teaching on the Sunday night on the bus. It was quite romantic when I think about it now. I taught myself to quilt during the two years I was a teacher in Rainy River. My first quilt was from his and my clothes. And this is to make you aware that I do have eight grandchildren and four grown adult children. And I spend a lot of time with them in the summers. Um, and they, like all of us, love to look at the horizon. These are my son's two daughters. He has three kids and these are his two of them. And there is a still medicine nurse in progress. So we got married and uh, we started our life together in Thunder Bay on a rural property there. He loved the North and I thought he might have been taking me back to Toronto because that's where he grew up, but he didn't want to do that. And it's just as well now because I'm very glad that I've stayed in Northern Ontario for my entire life. Place has greatly informed my art. And this is also the first piece in which I used the sun or the moon. And here I'm using both of them. I, I use them a lot in my current work, but this was 1990 when I made this piece. And I was 39, I'd been married for a few years by then. And I was figuring out what it meant to be marriage, to be married, because when the sun and the moon are in the sky at the same time, it's called a cosmic marriage. So that's the, the quilt is about marriage. And the title is actually Order Belies Chaos. We started our family in 1978, and I was astounded and amazed by the beauty of our children. I responded by painting watercolors of them when they were little and perfect. We moved to Kenora in Northwestern Ontario in 1982, and there were four beaches on Lake of the Woods. We also bought a boat there and did boat camping with the kids on the weekends. I photographed the kids near the water and painted them at night when they slept. The paintings were so popular, nearly everything I painted sold. And this is a quilt though, and those paintings of my third daughter, my third child, Grace, are on fabric. It's a fabric painting here. And the quilt is called, The Future Is Not Ours To See. And it's an alphabet quilt. So if you start with A, you go A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N. And then you hit the future is not ours. O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, B, W, X to C. So I made a piece. I don't have it in this slideshow, but it called not to know, but to go on. And I, I was interested myself just this morning to see that I had been thinking about that we really don't know what we're going ahead to. We just have to keep going. The future is not ours to see, not to know what to go on. Anyway, this is called Thunder and Lightning. And um, the uh, log cabin traditional quilt pattern is when you have half the strips light and half the strips dark and they go around and around the central square. And then you arrange those blocks into arrangements and in this one it's streak of lightning is the name of the arrangement 
and the quilt is called Thunder and Lightning. And at the time I was really interested in studying about the code, the language of quilt making and, and how they relate uh, to the bed. Most quilts are made either for fertility or for protection or for celebration. And, and about the bed, you know, the bed is where everything happens. It's a charged place. Love, sex, illness, death, comfort, dreaming, vulnerability. Insight comes when you're in that liminal space between sleep and being awake. So it's um, a powerful metaphor for being a, for a material poet like me. The title of the of the quilt is Thunder and Lightning because of the streak of lightning. And also because in a good storm, you're supposed to have both thunder and lightning. And in a good piece of artwork, you're supposed to have both art and craft. So this is another log cabin quilt and you can see how the dark strips and the light strips have been arranged to make this kind of dark and light pattern. And um, this is a quilt about memory and you can see how the little squares in, this, in the center of the quilt are tiny. And they are photo transfers of the children when they were learning to walk in Thunder Bay, my two older children. And um, as they get further away from the center, the, the, the central squares become larger and more abstract. They become paintings, not photo transfers. And it's about memory, how memory sort of changes the further back in our lives it gets and becomes something more magical. And so all of the fabrics in the uh, log cabins were from uh, that time in my life, my early, the first five or six years of marriage, when we had the, the first two children and we were young and all that stuff and had this farm. And, and so there are children's clothing, my clothing, husband's clothing, and also pure silk that I've invested in. And on the back, I put the title, something more magical than it ever was. At this time, I started using the backs of the quilts. It's fascinating and wonderful that textiles have two sides and gives me so much more space to, to work with. Of course, you don't always get to see the second side in, in art galleries, but it touches you. It's the second side is the one you pull over you in bed. So, uh, then we, in 1993, we took the four kids and moved to Manitoulin Island. And we found this house where I'm living now. And so I've been here for 30 years. And I have this beautiful view through all the seasons. I live here year round. I'm forever grateful for it. And so the children went to school on the school buses. Some of them went to high school. Some of them went to public school. And I started teaching painting at the local community college. And I also started teaching classical piano, which I had a degree in uh, at the church basement next door to the school. So I did it during the day. The kids just came out of school and, and did piano lessons with me. And then I was able to be home with the kids when they got home from school. I really loved this time in my life. And I, uh, I made a lot of quilts and it looks, it seems, how did you make quilts when you had four children? But I did, I certainly did. And this one is called Counting My Blessings. And you know how counting books for kids uh, have one chicken, two pigs, three apples. Well, this has got on the central panel of the four kids, the one, two, three, four. And the border is black velveteen with uh, the spirals. It's a very joyful piece, very, uh, Oh, I don't know. But I look back on these quilts now and I, I remember what uh, the great German painter Kath Kollwitz said when she was an older artist. She said, no longer diverted by other emotions, I work as the way a cow grazes, like all the time. And yet formerly, in my so wretchedly limited working time, I was more productive because I was more sensual. And that made me think, yeah, you were so, when you're in this childbearing and young parenting 
age, you are busy, but you are also of a certain sensuality, you know? And uh, I wouldn't be able to make these particular kinds of quilts anymore, just like I would not be able to paint my babies anymore because I paint directly from my life. My, my quilts are very, very journalistic, very like diaries about what's going on right now, my daily experience. This one is uh, from Manitoulin. And uh, making quilts about my daily experience was a way to take care of myself, I realized. Yeah, they're covers, and I am wrapped up in them when I make them. In Manitoulin, I told you it was a rural place. The birds fly overhead on country roads. My imagination has become my container in my quilts. In 2005, the kids flew out to the fearsome world. They were all gone by then. And I started making these protection blankets from Amish uh, traditional diamond in the square patterns. Just because I was, you know, concerned about the world then in 2005. And I'm still concerned about it, of course, but yeah. And so uh, this one has got little sequins in that shield area in the center. And that's inspired by the traditional uh, Indian, like East Indian mothers who would sew mirrors and sequins to their children's clothing to reflect the bad energy. This is another one, another protection blanket. It's called Each Stitch is a Prayer. You can't see the stitches in this particular, you have to see a detail, but it's covered with stitches and the word peace. And, um, I can see now I'm starting to use all naturally, not all dyed fabric. These are not natural dyes yet. These are still Procyon dyes, but I began only using my own uh, dyes um, in the middle of the 2000s. In 2006, I decided that I would needed to get more, more schooling. I already have a degree in fine art. I got one from Lakehead. Uh, through part-time when I was living in Kenora, but I decided in 2006 to enroll in Middlesex University in London, England, and take a, an online degree in embroidery, because England gives degrees in embroidery, and that's what I wanted to get. So it was online. I had tutors that I talked to on the phone. It was a very good degree, and in 2012, I graduated at the age of 61, and this was my graduation piece. It's called Monumental Simplicity. And that's the view from my house if you go up the hill. Uh, Monumental Simplicity is my graduation piece. My thesis was organized around the idea of large scale emptiness, like how I grew up, with many small marks, and how this kind of work affects us as if we are in nature. So this is a detail that you can see the stitching that's all hand stitched. Um, it's very vast. It's over 100, it's 120 inches square. Very, very big for a textile. And those are natural dyes. And it's just one layer though, it's not a quilt. Vastness, simplicity, purity of means. This one is entitled Mended World. My work has become more abstract, more universal, more based on the archetypal shapes of circle, spiral, cross, dot. I called it Mended World because when you make it, you have to, uh, this particular one, I had to do a backstitch for all of that central circle because those are stri string pieced and they're very wanting to fall apart. So in order for them not to fall apart, when I stitched them to the foundation and when my my group of women who were in the community project with me stitched them. We had to use the back stitch because this is one of the meditation panels. I made four meditation panels with my local community um, in the Manitoulin Circle Project. And here it is. This was in uh, World of Threads in 2014. You can see all four of the panels. And so it was really uh, maybe the, the best thing I ever did with my career so far was work with the community for four years and 140 women came and over the time but there were 40 people who came every week and it was really pretty amazing 
And those panels are still hanging in the community of Little Current on Manitoulin Island. So Ned and I still live in the same house and I'm still grateful for this beautiful view of sky and water through all the seasons. This is where I stitch. I stitch at the window and look at it. My work has evolved, but it has also remained the same in that it is still about my personal life, about my memories, about my dreams, and about my view. The sense of touch is important to my work. I hand piece all my work, I hand stitch it. And you all are very influenced by the sense of touch. We know what cloth feels like. We touch it every day. It's familiar. And the experience is elemental of cloth. The seams that join all the small pieces together are part of the texture of it. My aesthetic is minimalism with texture. And my concern is our human fragility. This title of this one is Stardust. And it is a collection of handmade doilies that were given to me over the years especially by the women from that circle project I told you about. They wanted me to be able to use them in my work. So it's a quilt and a quilt is a handmade object. And these doilies are handmade objects. And Mary Hunt Kallenberg, art curator, specialist in textiles said about handmade objects that they bypass the literal construction of language and touch us so profoundly that they change us without using words. And I think I don't have to tell this group about that because I believe that's what you're interested in is the handmade object. And um, yeah, this is the back of it. It's a difficult time we're living through right now. We're in another one of the states of not knowing what to do. We're witnessing so many things. This title of this piece is Basic Goodness. So there's that sky again. I want my work to be like the sky. When I look at the sky or I'm outside on a walk, something happens inside me that is beyond intellect. It's a reverie. I'm not really thinking, but things come to me insights, memories, decisions, and occasionally wonder, which is an existential condition. The title of this piece is My Open Heart. The title of this piece is Underfoot the Earth Divine. And you can see at the bottom, there's some interruption in this vertical strips. Those have, the vertical pieces have been cut into and velvet strips have been inserted reverse that okay so it's very divine down there um, it has this extra sensuality of velvet towards the earthy part bottom my work combines a minimalist composition with intimate familiar materials and dense small marks there's a wealth of texture in my work there's a repetition of hand touch this is the back of it. I call it back overhead the sun. And there's time in my work. It's embedded in there. My thesis, just to say it again, when work is simple and seemingly empty, yet covered with handmade marks that took significant time to make, then it is like nature and something mysterious happens. We have access to the immensity within. This is a detail of the central square. You can see how there's a crack in that central square that has been mended. Stitching is a way of mark making. It's time consuming, it's sensuous. The maker's hand touches the fabric repeatedly and creates a surface that others yearn to touch. 
It's the light, I think, also that it makes me take these photos. The light is changes all the time, all day long. And the uh, title of this one is uh, My Awakened Heart. And I'm going to read you something by Rainer Maria Rilke. Most experiences are unsayable and happen in a space that no word has ever entered. More unsayable than all other things are works of art. Those mysterious existences whose life endures beyond our own small transitory life. And this is the back of my awakened heart. It's called Noble Tenderness. The titles, both of these titles come from Pima Chodron, the Buddhist nun who lives in Canada, about how our hearts are soft and noble. And that pain and anger and all these things are in our hearts, but they also are, are noble. We always have heart and a soft part in our heart all the time. So the pain and everything like that makes our hearts actually softer is her theory. So that this is made of textile, it's, it's soft. Whoops, missed one. My chair. So the next few images, I'm just gonna tell you how I work. There's two, two parts of my work. There's the sitting in the chair, looking out the window part, which this is. Looking at the moving water, looking at the horizon line, my body still. Uh, my ego gets lost in the wider visual field. I go off onto tangents while I stitch. I go inside to my spirit. My hands busy with the stitching, the repetitive movement. It's like a channel that helps clear my mind and causes my inner world of imagination to get linked to the work that I'm working on. And I think it becomes felt by other people that this because of the time that's in it and the touch, you can actually feel me in the work. <laughs> Keep coming back to this because I don't want you to forget it. The, uh, my hands at work. It's a combination of your hand and your eye. There's a cooperation between looking out at nature and then repetitively touching the cloth and the thread with my hands. That is unique and phenom phenomenological phenomenological I never say the word it's when your body knows something and the textiles I make hold this complexity and I think it can be felt by my audience the spiritual connection is unnameable working with our hands causes ideas to flow I always have a journal close by to jot down any new idea or a decision that I've come to while I'm stitching there doesn't seem to be a mediation between the brain and the hand it's a direct link. But I also need to use my design wall. So this is the other way I work. I have to keep looking at what I've been doing in my lap so that I can get a far away look and make sure that I'm on the right track with my stitching. And so I use the design wall uh, in my home studio here. There's, I'm on the, you can see I'm this in the front in the lower right, there's a book open. It's actually my journal, and um, I'm uh, on my exercise bike looking at my design wall. Um, and I uh, use my journals a lot. I'm, so I make sketches or I make notes of what I need to do. You can see I'm trying to, do I want to have a lower binding? I'm deciding, should I put, put something on the bottom? And all you can see that my journals in that bookshelf, I have two bookshelves like that full of journals. I, they're very important to my practice. Finding a way to express what it is I want to express, what that unnameable thing is, is really difficult. I have to often try out a thread or a color or a fabric, and then I have to use my little scissors to take it out again. Yeah, I have to undo it a lot of times and redo it. My aim is to get to that mystery feeling of wonder and also to cause a yearning for people to touch it. I want you to be, want to touch it. And if I want people to have such an emotional reaction to my work, then I need to have the emotional reaction. 
And if it doesn't have that wonder factor I seek for me, I take it out and I redo it. It is an investment of time and wonder, but it's also time and labor, but it is also entirely intuitive. And I'm hard on myself until I find it. Only after I find exactly the right stitch to use, and exact fabric, and exact thread, can I settle in for the couple of months that takes me to do the work. I finished this piece last week. I took it outside and let the wind and the natural light test it. It's gorgeous. It's incredible. It's a power cloth. It's a cloth full of holiness and spirit and touch. So now I'm going to give you a few uh, of my new pieces, and we're almost finished. These are some of the new quilts that I've made in the last couple of years. The title of this one is uh, entitled Under Drifting Stars, and it's currently touring with the Quilt National Exhibition in the United States. I will read you my artist statement that I had to write for it. Here we go. A world of spirit thinly veiled, a sacred mystery, our cosmos, our day and night, the sun and the moon, and also the stars, childhood, and also eternity, also emotions, also dreams. Um, it, uh, it refers to the bed. It's a quilt to pull over your body and start dreaming. This one is titled Between Heaven and Earth. And this one is entitled Turning Forever to the Heart. Both these last two are small framed pieces that I made for an exhibition in Toronto last October. I feel cared for by the work I do. So it's these kind of circular patterns, they feel like, they make me feel like I'm being hugged. Here we are with the view again. My quilts are filled with slow process. My quilts are filled with time. They have hope in them because of the time and the touch I put there. I have to believe that they will be needed in the future. I must believe that or I wouldn't keep making them. They're heirlooms. They're objects full of love and care. This is called Prayer to the Sky. Deep within us, there's a fascination with the circle. The circle is an archetypal first shape. It's in within everybody, all over the world, across centuries, across continents. All humans have drawn circles. This is the second side. The use of touch and the amount of meditative time contained in hand-stitched art has a mystic power. This is, I'm, talk, I'm calling this right now, it's still very new and I'm not sure of the title. I'm calling it right now, Indigo Checkerboard. Um, it took me nine years to complete. It's entirely hand-pieced and it's 90 inches square from little one inch squares of muslin. It's about being alive, about stepping over holes, sometimes stepping into holes. I want to make my viewers experience the fragility of their bodies and the vastness of their spirit. And I don't know how to do that. How do I do that? As we move forward in our lives, sometimes there's thin ice. Sometimes there's deep water. Sometimes there's an edge of a cliff. Sometimes there's the banality of our everyday. This is what I call Canadian winter. It's a return to that log cabin pattern that I used so much when I was sensuous. <laughs> but now it has life experience. It's a little bit baggier. Uh, keep moving forward. Sometimes when you step, you will crack that glass underfoot. But just as often you won't. You'll be okay. You don't know, you have to trust. 
all the beauty and all the risk that years and years of life hold. Be unafraid of those big flat spaces. Be unafraid of the quiet. Be unafraid of the subdued palette. Final quilt here. This one is called Soft Summer Gone. It's a silk quilt. I made it in 2016. I the fabrics are all colored from natural dyes from wild plants that I gathered from where I live. The quilting is all embroidery. It is a, all of those lines, like a painting or a drawing, eh? It's all embroidery with uh, silk and wool threads. This quilt is in the permanent collection of the International Quilt Museum in Nebraska. To end, I'm going to give you a blessing from John O'Donohue. May the nourishment of the earth be yours. May the clarity of light be yours. May the fluency of the ocean be yours. May the protection of the ancestors be yours. And so may a small, a slow wind work these words of love around you an invisible cloak to mind your life. It's by John O'Donnell.